Pelanomi Hospital, Bloemfontein, South Africa, 1996. Something strange is going on in the intensive care unit. And at the center of this deadly mystery is a hospital bed. Meet bed number three. It's said that once you get in it, you won't get up. One person is a witness to the strange deaths that occur in the hospital's ICU. Meet nurse Penny Walden. Every Thursday was my day off. And on Fridays, when I came back in, the patient in bed three had passed away. In Nurse Walden's first four weeks on the job, four patients die in bed three. But her fifth patient, in as many weeks, seems to be well on a road to recovery. Mr. Cullen was responding very well to treatment, so I thought he's going to, you know, be fine, not a problem. But on Thursday, Penny's day off, he suddenly dies. A pattern is developing. Every Thursday for the past five weeks, a patient dies in the ICU, and every one of them has been in bed three. Penny takes her observations to the hospital administrator. Meet Mark Garner. I must admit, I was initially a little wary, but it was pretty amazing to see this pattern. And not only that, between quarter past eight and quarter to nine in the morning, now, I'm sorry, no one could convince me that that was just a coincidence. Could someone or something be killing patients? An investigation is launched. At the same time, rumors begin to spread around the hospital. People started to call bed three the deathbed, saying it was cursed as well. All kinds of crazy talk. For the same fatal half hour every Thursday, the hospital posts a guard at bed three it becomes known as the vigil. It just stopped. No one died on Thursdays in bed three anymore. But then, of course, we decided, well, there's no need for the vigil anymore. The vigil stops, and that's it. Next week, another death, bad. But then Penny switches shifts with a colleague. And on Thursday, July 2nd, 1996, at 8.22 a.m., it all becomes clear. I could not believe it. Agnes the cleaner polishes the floor in the ICU. And the cord can't reach from the wall to bed three. So what she had to do was use the plug right by the bed. Now what was plugged into that plug right by the bed was a life support system. Whenever Agnes unplugged the life support system and plugged in her floor polisher, another patient would end up dying. But how could she not notice the deaths week after week? Well, when, when, when it's unplugged and she's plugged in a polisher, it obviously makes a lot of noise. And she can't hear then the patient actually convulsing on the bed. Um, also, she had a personal stereo. But what about the times when guards were posted at bed three? Agnes didn't want to disturb them on those occasions, so she didn't clean the room. The investigation concludes. The deaths are ruled accidental, and the hospital begins to settle each case. Cleaner Agnes is let go. Mark Garner is held accountable for the accidental deaths and is fired by the hospital's board. Nurse Penny Walden, however, continues to help save lives. Well, I mean, you know, that's what this job is all about. So the curse of the deathbed turns out to be a cleaner's mistake. But did it happen? Was it true? The story of the cursed bed was actually reported in 1996 by newspapers all over South Africa. But no one bothered to check the facts surrounding the multiple death rumors at the actual Palanomi Hospital. The story is false. Urban legends often center on hapless culprits, as in this case, a floor cleaner who unplugged life support systems. 
It's possible to unplug the machine causing a patient to die, but it's a lot more difficult than we've shown. The systems have alarms, and many have backup battery power in case of emergency. Thank you.